Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Well, who doesn't love bacon? Well, I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you do. And I guarantee you that if you like bacon, you'll like home cured, spiced and smoked bacon better. It's absolutely delicious and you can tailor make it to how you like it. So hope you enjoy the rest of the video and we'll take you step by step on how to make bacon at home like this. Hello everyone. So here's a piece of pork belly that we could cure to make bacon. Although I have to tell you this cut wouldn't be my first choice because of that big dip in the skin there. But the main point is this piece of pork is skin on. Now, when I was a boy being brought up in England, bacon had the rind on it, meaning the skin. Um, my mum just used to snip a couple of places so they didn't curl up. And I'm used to eating bacon this way. And this is typically how I make my bacon. Um, you may think that the skin impedes the curing of the bacon. It really won't. But if you're worried about it, get a blade tenderizer which you can pick up from Amazon for well under 20 bucks or just have at it with a carving fork and make a few holes in it or you can cut the skin off um, if you buy a large full-sized piece of pork belly at Costco that will come with the skin off and I remember Daddy Lau on the Cooking from Lau channel lamenting long and loud about Costco removing the skin from his pork belly. Um, Cause I like skin on pork belly if I'm making um, braised pork belly, for example. So I get it. If you go to chef store, they will typically have two pork bellies in stock. One skin on, one skin off. So you can make your choice, but one way or another, um, don't worry about whether it's got skin on or not. Everything's gonna work out fine. We're now going to take our piece of pork belly, rub our cure all over it, stick it in a backpack bag and leave it in the fridge for a week, turning it once a day. This is a printed copy of my curing worksheet. You'll see that I calculate the weight of salt, sugar and Prague powder number one, our curing salt, in grams. I do this because as a percentage of the actual weight of the meat, it's not much and it's easier to be precise uh, weighing in grams like this. You really only need three things for the cure that you're going to rub on. Salt, you can use any salt, it's better if it's fine grained, uh, but you do need to use a salt that doesn't have iodide added. Sugar, again, frankly, you can use any sugar you like. I use soft brown sugar just because I like the way it mixes in with the other curing ingredients um, and it adds just a little, nice little colour but if you use pure granulated sugar you probably wouldn't notice the difference in the taste. Prague powder number one we'll talk about this diff separately in a little while um, you only need a really really small amount of this uh, and frankly if you're not going to smoke this meat you could probably leave it out. Um, but there it is. I use it regularly when I'm making bacon. So let's go ahead and get our cure mixed up. Okay, so here's our cure. Salt, sugar and Prague powder mixed together with our spices, which were two dozen juniper berries. That's 24 and a half tablespoon of black peppercorns, which I smashed up to a powder in a coffee electric coffee grinder that I keep especially for that purpose now what we're going to do with that is rub it all over every side including the sides short and long as well as the skin side and the meat side of this pork belly then we're going to backpack it and put it in the fridge for a week then we're going to smoke it so here's our pork belly vacuum packed uh, which we are going to pop into the fridge and turn it once a day for seven days before we pop it in the smoker now 
For those of you who don't have a vacuum packer, no worries. You can get pretty much the same effect by using a gallon Ziploc freezer bag, pushing all the air out that you can, and then sucking the last bit of air that you can with a drink straw before you seal it up. So I like to use a vacuum packer, but you can use Ziploc bags just as well. Okay, before we move on, it's probably worth having a conversation about this. I know it is Prague powder, pink curing salt number one. It's basically salt, six and a quarter percent of sodium nitrite, and a pretty red color to make it pink so you don't mistake it for regular salt. Um, this is probably a lifetime supply, unless you're doing commercial smoking and barbecuing. Why do we use it? To stop ourselves from dying from botulinum toxin poisoning. Um, some of the temperatures that we're going to smoke our bacon at um, are in the range where botulinum toxin, botulism, can flourish and trust me we don't want that. Um, a lot of people freak out when you talk about adding nitrites and nitrates to food. Um, I've done quite a lot of research and while I wouldn't want to overuse them, um, I'm not altogether sure that the running around with your hair on fire attitude towards these is necessarily justified. Perhaps we'll talk about that in a dedicated video one day. I know it's not something most of you would be interested in, but some of you might. Anyway, I'll put a link to, to this. On, I got mine from Amazon, I think about two years ago. And trust me, two and a half pounds will last you a lifetime. If you can find a smaller bag, I'd recommend that you do. I saw this product on the shelf at Costco last week and took a picture of it because I need to talk about this some more. Um, it's very important that you don't confuse this with curing salt or pink curing salt or Prague powder number one. Prague powder should never be used for cooking or seasoning food. It's only for curing meats fish, poultry, etc. This pink salt you could use as the two and a half percent salt, but what I suspect they mean is that this is supposed to be Himalayan, really Pakistani pink salt, and it is not a cure. Um, it's not to be used for curing. So just be aware there's a significant difference and don't mistake one for the other. Here's how our pork belly looks. Um, after it's come out of the fridge in its zip slot bag after a week of curing. We're now going to cut it out of its bag, rinse it off under the tap. We're not going to soak it, just rinse it to wash all the salt and curing spices off the outside of the pork. Then we'll dry it for about an hour uncovered in the fridge um, bacon smokes a little better if it's really dry on the outside um, and then we'll have it in the smoker and here's a close-up of our pork belly after we've rinsed the curing spices off um, I just want to point out little finger coming in bottom left what may look like bits of curing spice left are in fact uh, little dimples in the fiber of the meat uh, where they were but it's still left a little hole um, after being tightly back packed this looks great we're going to dry it for an hour as i said and then it'll be into the smoker so here we are with the pork belly in the smoker temperature probe inserted we've got some water in our water bowl and we've topped up the wood reservoir I cook this typically to an internal of about 140, bearing in mind that the bacon will be cooked further before it's eaten. So we don't need to take it to the full 160, 165. Well, here's the skin side of the smoked bacon as it came out of the smoker. We'll flip it and show you what the other side looks like. Here's the meat side of the bacon, taken on a lovely color and it smells absolutely divine. 
We'll chill this down overnight and then get it sliced up in the morning. This is the wood that I strongly recommend you use for smoking bacon, apple wood chips. While I've said and will continue to say many times on this channel, taste is a personal thing, I think you will find if you use hickory or mesquite, the smoke is going to be overpowering. And a bit like salt, you know, you can add a bit more, but you can't take it out. So first time you do this, I'd strongly suggest apple wood. By the way, you can find exactly this bag at Walmart and you'd have a few pennies change out of four bucks. And here's the finished project. Uh, I've cut two slices off just so you can see. Um, I do actually hand slice my bacon. Um, won't have to for much longer because I have a sneaky suspicion that the sous chef has ordered me a commercial meat slicer for Christmas, but we'll see. Um, I did trim off the bacon to get it square and I'll keep the off cuts and make lardons out of them for um, flavouring other dishes and they'll be great for that. Um, in the middle is the uh, pour down poured in a slicer that I use. I've had this knife for two and a half years and I haven't had to sharpen it yet. Um, it really helps me to slice the bacon into nice, even, hand-sliced rashers. Um, and by the way, this knife costs somewhere between 40 to $45. It's absolutely amazing value. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you want to check one out, maybe as a last minute Christmas present for someone. But here's the bacon. I think beautiful color, um, beautiful aroma, even before we even start to cook with it. Um, and what I think is the main benefit of making your own bacon at home, apart from the fact that you know exactly what's in it, is that you can flavor it according to how you like. This is um, black pepper and juniper berry, which is my favorite. But I've also made thyme flavored bacon before. That's outstanding. Um, you can do whatever you want or do nothing. Just have smoked bacon. With that, folks, thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends and family and have a great Christmas.